If we bring together SwiftUI, Foundation, and Combine at the same time, we can add a little timer to our program up here to give a little bit of pressure to our user as they're trying to learn. Now, a simple implementation of this doesn't take much effort, but it comes with a bug that takes a little bit of extra work to fix. For our first pass of the timer, we're going to add some properties to Content View up here. One will be a timer that triggers once every second. Another will be the amount of time remaining the user has, and we'll subtract one from that every time our timer fires. Hopefully, it'll incentive to speed up while they're trying to think. Anyway, we can add these properties now. We'll say at state private var time remaining is 100, so a little over a minute and a half by default. Then our timer will be let timer equals timer.publish, publish every one second with no tolerance, it's irrelevant, on the main run loop, in the common modes, with no special options, using auto connect so it starts immediately. So we've got 100 seconds to answer the questions and we'll count down once a second like this. Now whenever our timer fires, we want to subtract one from time remaining so it counts down and down and down. We could try some complex date ma mathematics here to say, let's store the start date and then the current date and subtract the two and da da da. There's really no need as you'll see. Instead, we'll just add an on receive modifier to our Z stack. We'll say uh, on receive, timer, time sent in, we'll ignore it, it's fine. If time remaining, time remaining is greater than zero, then time remaining minus equals one. So we've got a trivial condition here, just to make sure we don't go into negative numbers, it'll always be zero or higher. So now our code starts at 100 seconds and will count down to zero, but we've still got to actually display it somewhere. And honestly, this is as simple as having another text view showing time remaining with string interpolation somewhere with a little bit of formatting so it looks quite nice on the screen. So we've got our, our V stack here, which currently only has a Z stack inside. And the reason for the outer V stack is because this is exactly where we can add our time remaining counter. We'll say there's a text time remaining. So time is time remaining like that. I'll do a font of large title. I'll do a foreground color of uh, white. I'll do a little bit of padding, so we'll do horizontal 20 and then uh, vertical 5. They're different because by default text has a little bit of padding vertically anyway because of line spacing. Uh, we'll then say there is a background of dot black, dot opacity 0.75, and then we'll do a clip shape of capsule like that. So hopefully, press Command R now, we should see our timer counting down nicely. Let's find out. Boom, there we go. So it's now counting down perfectly, 95, 94, 93, and so forth, all the way down, which is great. The app actually works correctly. But there's a small problem, a subtle problem. Look at the current value. You can see it's 83, 82, 81, and 80. I'm gonna press Command H. Oh, sorry, Shift Command H. Ready for 76, 75, now. On the home screen now. Okay, it was 85 on the home screen, like that. I go back, back to Flashzilla, it's now 73. You see that? 70, 69, 68, back home screen. It was 68, I'll wait a little bit, then go back to Flashzilla again, 66. So the time isn't quite what it was. Here's 60, down home screen, wait a little bit, back in again, 57, 58 or so. so the timer shows a value between two and three seconds lower than it should have done when we went to the home screen. It, it, what happens is it goes to the background and carries on running for a couple of seconds and only then pauses. And it'll come back to the background, uh, back to the foreground again when the app reactivates. Um, we can do better than this. We can say actually stop the clock immediately. As soon as we go into the background, just pause it immediately, stop counting down, as opposed to losing those two or three seconds each time, which isn't very friendly. To do that, we're gonna add a new property to track our current scene phase. It'll tell us when the app's active or not. So we'll say at environment backslash dot scene phase, scene phase, there we go, var scene phase. I'll also add a local property at state private var is active is true. 
are we currently ticking down or not? Now we have two of these things. Yes, scene phase will tell us if the app itself is active, inactive or background, but that's not the same as actually counting down or not, because if you think about it, uh, when a player's gone through the whole deck of cards, nothing to remain, it remains to be shown, we don't want to count down anymore, even if the app's in the foreground. So scene phase will be active, we're showing the app right now, they can interact with it, but it's active will still be false, they can't do anything right now. Anyway, we can now add another uh, modifier down here. This time it's gonna be on change of. We're gonna watch scene phase. And we'll perform, perform this thing here. Our new phase comes in. And then if new phase is equal to active, is active, is true. For all other values, is act, uh, inactive or background or who knows what in the future, we'll do is active, is false. Do not count down. And now we can modify our timer thing to say, make sure we're active before we subtract one. Action, active, sorry. <laughs> um, make sure we're active before we count down. So we'll say guard is active, else return. Do not count down if we are currently in the background. And with that small change, hopefully now our timer will freeze immediately as we go to the background. So I'll wait for 95 or so. Shift command H, go. It was 95, we're in the background now. Back to the foreground again, exactly where it was. So it hasn't changed, so they, it stops that mystery time loss. So 90, background, wait, wait, wait. Foreground again, there we go. So it works exactly correct now, we don't lose that time, uh, which is a much nicer player experience.